it's not easy. It's dangerous. It hasn't been done before. But these are the sorts of things that capture people's imaginations. Let's talk about the future of space exploration. John, please come in. I can read you loud and clear, Grant. Excellent. Okay, so this is John Brandt Hoover. He's a senior engineer at Astrobotic. Hey, John. So let's talk about electronic components in space. It's probably one of the harshest environments for electronic components to function reliably. What sort of factors do you have to take into account? Okay, so one of the biggest challenges is the getting the electronic assemblies to survive launch. They go through severe vibration and then, of course, shock of thermal shock uh, as it goes into a vacuum uh, where there's no air to cool the electronics. So the electronics are built to survive extreme vibrations and undergo testing up to 14 G's RMS. Then we throw them into a vacuum chamber uh, where we pump out the air to simulate the vacuum of space. And as you know, with no air, uh, it's hard to dissipate heat from electronics. So we have to rely on thermal radiators to dissipate that heat into space. What about uh, temperature extremes and uh, radiation? Well, as far as temperature extremes goes, we have cooling systems, uh, as, I, as I said, the thermal radiators, and we also have heaters uh, throughout the system to keep vital components within temperature spec. And as far as radiation goes, since our mission is only 12 days, that is not a major factor. Um, we will be using things like watchdog timers uh, to, pro to provide heartbeats to the electronic systems to make sure that they are not latched up. Uh, we will also use current sensors to monitor the current of the de devices to make sure that they are not undergoing la uh, latch up. And if they are, we will reset them. All right. Now, talking about reliability, I mean, if a lunar lander breaks down, you can't just take it into a shop. So what sort of factors do you look at in terms of the reliability of those systems? Well. The biggest thing is when you're designing a system for space is to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, the simpler the device is, the less modes of failure you're, you have. And then again, as I said, we will be using watchdog timers and current sensing to monitor the system. And also, we will have reloadable computer code on some of the devices that can be reloaded from the comlinks in case there is a bit flip and a program gets corrupted. It's really funny because as an electrical engineer I hear you use terms like watchdog timer and uh, bit flip and, and things like that. So are you able to use a COTS process for component selection or do you use space grade components already? Well, it's going to be a mix of COTS and RAD hard. Um, some of the uh, more critical flight systems, such as the flight computer, that'll be RAD hard. Uh, some of the things uh, like simple uh, microcontrollers to do housekeeping, monitor temperatures, turn heaters on and off, uh, they will be industrial, mil spec, or automobile grade. Okay, John, so it sounds like communication with your lander is a critical component. What sort of protocol do you use to keep tabs on the lander and send it instructions? Well, the lander to moon link uh, will be an advanced radio system using complex modulation waveforms for maximum data throughput. Uh, we will be using a commercial ground station on Earth that is yet to be determined. Um, the key thing also, we will also be using the radio system for ranging and tracking so uh, people here on the ground can actually tell which direction and uh, speed our vehicle is uh, moving. So I assume that because of your proximity to the sun that you can use solar power. What sort of uh, power budget do you work with on your lander? 
Well, once we're on the moon's surface, we will be in a power-rich environment. We expect to have upwards of 700 watts of electricity available, which is actually more than we intend to use. We will probably not even be using any of the battery power uh, from the lander at that point. Do you make use of low power components to keep consumption down? Well, yes, swap or size, weight, and power is always a major concern in spacecraft design. Um, the lower power usage that we have, the less battery we have to carry, the smaller the uh, conductors to those systems can be, and the lower the mass can be of the lander, which can then be turned into more mass for cargo. What sort of sensors do you have? on board the lander? Uh, we have many sensors. Uh, in the propulsion system, we have pressure transducers and temperature sensors to monitor the fuel system. Uh, the guidance and control electronics, or uh, GNC. We have sun sensors. We have star trackers. We have inertial measurement units. We're probably going to carry two of those for redundancy. Uh, as John mentioned earlier, a LiDAR system and navigation cameras. Sounds like a complete package, John. It is. Well, best of luck uh, with your lander and with all of Astrobotic's future endeavors. Thank you. We'd also like to thank our sponsors who helped make this episode possible. Microsemi, Vichay, and Phoenix Contact. 